All right, I think we're recording. Perfect. So again, welcome to finding the right job fit. Tips for uh, the job that's right for you. And so, you know, we all want to choose a career that will make us happy. But, you know, how can we know that that will be the case as we're doing our job search? And so research, research does suggest that human beings are really bad <laughs> at predicting how they will feel when doing something in the future. And it's not hard to find someone who started out thinking that they would love their chosen profession, only to wind up hating it. <laughs> and so we want to hopefully avoid that for you. So in fairness, you know, how are you supposed to know if you will be happy um, as an investment banker or an artist or a professor if you actually haven't done any of these things yet. And so who has ever in the history of mankind taken a job and had it actually turn out exactly the way they imagined it would? And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. And so looking for a job, it's kind of like dating a little bit. Uh, it can be easy to go online and find a match for a first date. But what happens afterwards and uh, is what matters the most. You know, will that first date or interview turn into a long term relationship or is it just going to be a bust? So job searching, it can be hard work. Um, it's basically a job in itself. And it's not just the question of finding a job, um, you know, any job. It's important to find the right job and a job that's, you know, going to be a good fit for you for now and for the future. Either, you know, as a stepping stone for your career or as an opportunity you'll be comfortable with for the long haul. Uh, if it's the wrong job, you'll end up having to start a job search all over again if the position doesn't work out. So besides it being stressful, you'll need to avoid being considered a job hopper uh, when writing your resume. So we want to make sure we can't, you know, find the right job that's going to be like 100% perfect. But th these are just some tips to hopefully help you find the job that's going to be the best fit for you um, as much as possible. And so, you know, job searching is time consuming as well as hard work. And because it can be even harder when a job doesn't work out and you end up quitting or getting fired, it's best to spend your time trying to get it right from the time you start the job search process. So here are some tips to help you find a job that hopefully you'll love. So number one, making a match. So before you, you start your job search, Spend time making sure you're looking for the right job. Um, if you're not certain about what you want to do, take a career quiz um, or a couple of career, qu career quizzes uh, to generate some ideas about what you might want to be looking for. And if need be, get career coaching or counseling to help get you on the right track. Um, job search engines are a great place to start as well, to search for jobs that are a match for your skills your experiences, and your interests. And definitely after this presentation, there are links to some career qu quizzes that you can take online. I've done them myself. Um, it's a lot of fun. You learn a little bit about what your skills are and how those match up with certain types of jobs. So number two is get the inside scoop. And what that means is don't just apply for the job, take it a step further. Use your connections on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and other networking sites to discover whom you know at the company. Um, ask them for insight and information on the company, you know, as well as about the job that they do. Um, your contacts may also be able to provide you with a referral for the position. So check out the company's LinkedIn page and, you know, social media profiles to just gather as much information as you can. I've utilized um, websites like Glassdoor to learn more about a company because a lot of times people that have formally worked at the company and you have to take some of their comments with a grain of salt because if, um, something they took personally happened to them at the organization. Sometimes they can, you know, write comments about the organization in a negative light that really don't truly reflect the organization. So you kind of, just like you read reviews for different products, you'll see 
positive reviews and negative reviews. So you just have to make sure that you read through all of them to get a well-rounded, um, comprehensive list of information about the organization and not just take all the positive information and only the negative comments, but take them both together just as you would as you're researching anything else. So interviewing works both ways, and you've probably heard about this. So it's just as valuable for you to interview the company as it is for them to interview you. Uh, be prepared to answer interview questions and then also have a list of interview questions of your own ready to ask. Because you know at the end of every interview, they ask, do you have any questions? And I know uh, myself, uh, and Salisa McKay, who's on, um, on the webinar today as well, we've done interviews and we, we ask that question at the end and when they don't have any questions, you're kind of like, are you prepared for this? Are you interested in this position? There's no way that we could have possibly listed everything about the job in the job description. So we like it when you come with questions and so do uh, other people that are interviewing you for jobs. So if you're not 100% sure, about a job offer and you haven't met the team you'll be working with, you know, ask if you can meet your future boss and colleagues. Um, it's also perfectly fine to ask for time to consider a job offer if you need time to think it over. Um, it's a, this is an opportunity to be honest and upfront um, during this process and just learn more and as much as you possibly can, because that's the whole point. We're trying to make sure that we gain as much information to find out, is this going to be the right job for me? So number four is check out the company culture. Uh, so the job may sound terrific, but do you want to work for the company? Is the company a culture fit for you at this stage of your career? Um, is it too formal? Is it too casual? Um, you know, um, you might be able to see some of those things either from their social media sites or their website. You know, how are the employees dressed? Where are they working? Are they working in, at a desk, in a cubicle, in an office? Um, are there open spaces? Uh, are there ways that they have associates connect with each other during work hours, outside of work hours? Uh, so are these things, you know, what's important for you and what do you think is going to be a good fit? So how is the organization structured? Um, are there opportunities for advancement? So spend some time reading what employees have to say about the company, like I mentioned before, like on Glassdoor. If you're a college graduate, you know, ask the career office on campus, reach out to, you know, Kaufman Scholars Career and Alumni Team you know, if they have a network of people that you can connect with, uh, and then go back to your LinkedIn connections and, you know, just follow up with questions. You can do like a cold search on LinkedIn if you're like, I want to work at Cerner. And if sure enough, you type in Cerner in LinkedIn, uh, of course, the organization page will show up. And then anybody that has ever worked at Cerner, currently works there, would pop up. And you can just kind of look through the different options and uh, figure out, oh, I think I want to talk to that person, and you reach out to them, and of course, send a note as to why you want to connect with them on LinkedIn. Just, you know, tell me a little bit about what it's like to work there, because uh, you hope that folks would be honest about what is it truly like to work at the organization versus what people see from the outside based off of just what's on the web page. Um, you know, if diversity, equity, and inclusion are going or are, are something that are important to you just looking at who works there looking at the leadership is important to see because that lets you know um, who works there what do the people look like um, is they say diversity is important how is that reflected um, especially now with COVID-19 uh, you say you care about your employees and the community but how does your reaction to the recent events reflect that. Um, so that'll come up later as we talk a little bit about job searching in COVID-19, but I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that here. And then number five, making sure the job is a good fit. So 
in addition to making sure you um, that you want to work for the company, carefully evaluate the job offer. Do you truly want this job? Um, will you be happy doing it? And of course, you can only think about, will I, do I think I will be happy doing it? So this is, again, we're just gathering information to make the, the best decision possible. Because I think sometimes we take jobs thinking we know that it, that's going to be a good fit or we're going to enjoy it or we know somebody that does that job and we like that person and if they like their job I would like the job too that's not necessarily the case so you want to make sure you evaluate what the job offer is and if you truly want the job and will it boost your career and will it give you flexibility um, you know if work-life balance having a family is important will that be an opportunity for you or will they expect you to be working you know after work hours checking your phone and your email is the salary what you expected if not is negotiating a higher salary an option and there are definitely resources out there that help um, help you in that process of negotiating salary options are the employee benefits sufficient for your needs so are you thinking about maybe going back to school do they have benefits for tuition reimbursement? Um, so things like that, you know, healthcare, um, insurance, what do those benefits look like? And then, you know, how about the work schedule, the hours, the travel, if that's required? Um, is there anything about the job or the compensation package that is making you think twice? This is the time to act before you accept the offer and ask more questions and to see if there's any flexibility with any of the things that are listed in the job offer. So of course, you know, not all jobs work out perfectly, even if you do all the right things. However, you'll have a better chance of making a suitable match for yourself if you're careful about every step of the search process and you make time to do your due diligence before you say yes um, to the person extending the offer to you. So that's really just some quick tips on um, making sure you do a little bit more than beyond what you typically would in searching for a job to make sure that you find a job that's going to be the right fit. And like I mentioned before, it's not going to be perfect, uh, but these are just some ways you can hopefully avoid some of the downfalls of uh, other folks that have gone into positions thinking, oh, this is going to be a great fit for me. And then they find out later that it is not. Um, so I'm actually going to get ready to transition into the information about COVID-19 in the job search process. Um, but before I do that, are there any questions? I'll, I'll leave a little bit of time here um, before we transition to see if there are questions related to that finding the right jobs, uh, the right job for you. You can either type them in the chat box if you feel more comfortable doing that and we'll keep an eye on it. How, so um, we have a question, how would you go about saying that a job isn't the right fit to quit? Jesus, can you elaborate on that? Like, are you, oh, so like when you have to explain why you're quitting and they ask me why. So yeah, I think if you're, and I always feel like documenting things are very important. Um, so let's say that, you know, you came in with certain expectations about a position and you're working at the job and you're finding that it's not meeting those expectations. I think first and foremost, you want to make sure that you're talking with your supervisor just to make sure like is this um you know i'm having 
um, these experiences in the job to see if, you know, if there's been some miscommunication and talking through those things first to see if those things can be rectified. And then, you know, if things aren't changing or if you feel like, um, you know, just be honest, if it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit. Not every job is going to be, you know, the right fit for every person working there. Um, so just having an honest conversation as to, you know, why um, you've decided to transition on to another job. But I think it also helps employers, you know, if someone were to tell me this is the expectation I came in having and this is what I'm experiencing, giving the supervisor an opportunity to talk through that, but then know like, okay, maybe I need to make some changes as a manager to see how I can help you. And then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And then we just part ways. Um, I think in our culture, we just have a really hard time communicating and being honest. And I think it's only fair to just say and explain why um, you've decided uh, to leave a job. And I think sometimes you actually don't have to tell them, like, it's not against the law to say, like, why you're leaving. <laughs> I think it's just the nice thing to do and the moral thing to do. But if you're like, I don't have to give you a reason why, then you don't have to give a reason why. But I think you also don't want to burn any bridges as well. So. Ah, so Salisa and I are thinking the same thing. <laughs> She says it's, you know, you don't want to burn bridges while breaking up with your employer. Tell the truth, but you can keep the details to yourself. Most of the time you will do an exit interview with an HR rep where you can discuss any issues with a supervisor or any job specifics. So I haven't got, actually had the opportunity to do an exit interview. I hear about these all the time and I'm like, oh, it'd be nice to actually sit down and talk about. A lot of times it's just, you know, I was just transitioning the transition. It was my time. I had been with the organization. There was no room for advancement. And so I said, oh, you know, I'm moving on just based off my career goals. But yeah, I never really had the opportunity to express that. But Salisa makes a really good point about that. But yeah, like we both said, the whole, you don't want to burn bridges. Because I think some employers get suspicious when you indicate you cannot, um, contact my previous employer and because I'm always like well why is that you know what what was that situation about and I think it gives us we want to have these ideas in our head as to why that is so yeah you don't want to burn bridges you want to leave your current employer you want to leave with a good relationship to where um, they can speak as a you know possibly a reference or if your next job is wanting to to call that employer Good question though, very good question. Any others before we move on? Wonderful, so if anything pops up, uh, of course we will keep an eye out on the chat box, but thank you so much. So we're gonna move on to how will COVID-19 affect your job search? That's pretty much all the emails and things I see on my LinkedIn profile now, um, talking about what does the job search market look like for folks um, out there either in a current job, in searching for a job, just graduating from college, what does it look like? And what can you do during this time um, to make yourself uh, a good candidate and, and find find jobs out there. So we're, we will talk a little bit about, you know, pivoting and being flexible during this time. We just talked about finding the right job and doing the, those extra steps to find the right job for you. But now, given the current situation that we are in, it's going to be a time to be flexible um, and to possibly pivot what you were currently thinking about in terms of a job. Uh, and what does that look like? So as I, I mentioned before, you know, this landscape looks very different today. Um, we're facing some just unprecedented times that I don't think any of us could have ever imagined. And we don't know how long this will last, unfortunately. So since we can't predict when the worst will be over or even when, you know, the virus will be contained and we'll be 
we will be back out there. Um, your best strategy is to focus on the short-term solutions that'll get you through this challenging time. And so doing nothing right now is not an option. And while you cannot control how this virus has affected individuals and the job market, you can take action. You know, we, we understand what, when you understand, you know, what's changing, you have the opportunity to better manage your own outcomes. And so while it's true, many companies are doing hiring freezes right now and others are reducing staff, some industries have been ramping up their recruiting efforts to fill critical positions. And so how can you survive this turbulent economy right now uh, so, you know searching for a job whether you currently have one or not can feel confusing and challenging for sure with both you and companies you're applying for trying to take the best steps uh, in the interest of health and productivity right now there may be an added level of complexity when trying to get a job so if you're searching just remember keep on applying like the slide says um, employers are still hiring um, focus on industries that are in need and sort jobs by what's, you know, most recent. So if you're not hearing back from employers, maintain momentum by applying to jobs that match your skills, experience, your qualifications. The employers may be taking some time to answer questions that may affect their conversations with you, such as, you know, whether their workforce should work remotely, um, you know, set an application goal each day and reward yourself in small meaningful ways after reaching it like we said you know searching for a job is a job in itself and so just like how many of us might set goals for the day of what we need to accomplish the same is with if you're like I'm gonna apply to two jobs today um, just making sure you're setting those goals and um, rewarding yourself and taking these these breaks that are very necessary during this time. Um, and think about what you can do today, you know, and then just in the next maybe 30 days, even up to 60 days from now. And this is not about forever. It's about, you know, what can you do right now? So no one will penalize you, I think right now, for sure, for taking a job outside of your field or career path just for a little while. Um, but just trying to still match up your skills with a job, it just might not be in the particular industry that you had initially sought out. They'll understand, and it may even make you more marketable when this crisis is all over. You're likely, you've likely had a successful career because you have certain attributes, and now you'll need to tap into them in this kind of unprecedented way. So use this time to explore jobs you may not have considered in the past, uh, and perhaps you'll find opportunities you wouldn't have necessarily pursued otherwise. And so, you know, if you enjoy this working from home piece, um, perfect timing, uh, looking for jobs that have that work from home um, component where the location, you know, it's not relevant and in-person contact is not necessary. I think many people enjoy that piece. Uh, and so consider sectors that are ramping up their hiring to meet current demands, um, even national brands. So if you were like, oh man, I would have loved to work for a comp like a really large national organization. There are companies like, I mean, Amazon, Blue Apron, Trader Joe's, Zoom. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, they're all looking to fill positions throughout the country. And so it's kind of a great way to secure like a interim job until the, the economy recovers. So just, you know, again, it's this portion of the presentation is gonna be a lot about that whole flexibility piece and pivoting and being creative in terms of here are my skills, how can I fit those in with other jobs that I might have not necessarily looked at before COVID-19 hit. Definitely continue to network. As you can see, we are all online right now. Everybody's online right now. So now is the time to leverage your professional network. You know, LinkedIn has more than 500 million users and many recruiters use social networking to source new talent. So make sure your profile is updated and as complete as possible. You have a photo, you've filled in as many sections of your profile. And you want to make sure you're putting in words that if a recruiter were to type in those keywords, your 
your LinkedIn profile would pop up. So connecting with professionals in your line of work and reestablishing relationships with um, people that you connected with in college and you know colleagues that you've had if you've already been working um, from your previous jobs, from your alma mater, and even you know social acquaintances, they can open up opportunities you might not have considered. And I've been telling folks this, you know, the more people who know what you're wanting to do, the more likely they can reach out to their networks. Or if an opportunity, you know, passes by and, you know, I had had a conversation with Autumn, let's say, and Autumn told me, oh, Mako, I'm thinking about doing this. And I'm like, hey, I just met somebody that's in that industry. Let me connect you with them. So the more conversations you have with people and let them know what you're looking for, the better, because then they can reach out to their networks. So post ideas articles and other content that will attract and engage your target audience, especially recruiters. Um, LinkedIn is not all about take, take, take. You want to make sure you're contributing content to the platform as well. So if you see an interesting article um, or someone's posted something, rather don't just like like it, but comment on it. Um, we'll start creating that network for you. So you can introduce yourself to recruiters at companies you admire uh, via LinkedIn or through their website. Um, but do your research first, spend time on their career site to learn what they're about and if they're if they are currently hiring, of course. Uh, many companies are updating their sites to reflect how they're handling business during the pandemic, including you know work from home policies, virtual interviews, and other essential um, things during coronavirus. So definitely use this time to network. One advantage to many of the students that are getting ready to graduate is their ability to spend several weeks networking with professionals in their fields before they've graduated. Um, so networking is as important to your job search uh, as your resume. So just keep that in mind. You know, too often the focus is on finding advertise opportunities. Um, so you can always reach out to your network and see if there's something that hasn't been advertised uh, that you could tap into as well and utilizing your network. I think a lot of times people will say that they did find jobs through their network versus what they've seen posted. But again, you just always wanna make sure at this time that people are hired, that organizations are hiring. Um, when it is time to interview, just make sure you're prepared to do so virtually. Many of the same rules apply to an in-person interview. So for example, dress as though you're going to be at the company's office. I think right now we're in sweatshirt and hoodie and t-shirt mode. <laughs> so of course, even if it's a virtual interview, you want to dress the part as if you were going in person. Even if you're being interviewed on the phone, um, I just think it puts you in the right state of mind if you're dressed appropriately. Uh, and then just be cognizant of your tone so you, so you sound like enthusiastic because I think a lot of us are very drained now being in Zoom calls and on the phone so much. I think it's important to just put yourself in the right state of mind when you're doing an interview virtually. So control your environment, you know, find a place that's quiet, clutter free, it's well lit. Um, I think a lot of times we want to face ourselves to the window or have our backs to the windows a lot of times in our spaces, but you want to make sure that the window is actually facing you to give you more light because that's the worst thing is when you can't see the candidate on screen. So you want to just think about little things like that for phone interviews. You won't have a cheat sheet. They can't see you on the phone, even on a Zoom meeting, you could have a sheet of paper in front of you um with some of the questions interviewers typically ask like tell us a little bit about yourself or if you have you know questions you want to ask having a copy of that information a copy of the job description talking points about your qualifications and how they match up with the job requirements and a list of questions to ask the interviewer um, like i mentioned before so you can have that information with you definitely in an in-person interview. I've seen people bring like a portfolio and they've got all that information, but you can definitely have that now um, in a Zoom interview or a phone interview. Um, so definitely for video interviews, most people are using Zoom. Most folks have it downloaded now, but just make sure you download any necessary programs if they're using like Microsoft Teams or 
some other video conferencing software, just making sure that you have all that ready to go ahead of time and not like five minutes before your scheduled interview time. Test the equipment with a friend to familiarize yourself, make sure, can you see me? Can you hear me? Uh, and just testing all of that out before the interview. So application documents. So even though you're searching for possibly like short-term employment during this time, you should apply the same best practices to help all job seekers, you know, stand out in this crowded job market. Uh, so they found, a, there was a, a study that was conducted and they said they found that the most successful resumes achieve three critical goals. They present a compelling career narrative. So, and if you're like getting ready to graduate, of course you don't have a career narrative, so to speak, but hopefully you have some experience with any clubs or organizations you've been a part of, projects you've worked on, but kind of telling a story uh, in that resume to reflect that, you know, create visual balance. I think a lot of times people cram a lot of stuff on a resume and we want to try to create some kind of balance because we know recruiters do not spend minutes they don't even spend minutes looking at your resume they spend seconds looking at your resume so just making sure you create some visual balance to make it easy for a recruiter to see the highlights of your resume and um, illustrating your value so compelling narrative whether that's a career narrative or um, a narrative about your your college career and experiences visual balance and illustrating your your value and then do regular reevaluations of your resume you know up op to optimize your search you know reevaluate your cover letter resume and even the jobs you're applying to every week or so ask yourself you know are the jobs i'm applying for a good fit for my skills and background and level of experience you know am i willing to be doing this job even if it's for a short term period of time. And then is my resume enticing to employers based on their their job posting? And then the cover letter, you know, does it expand on my most relevant experiences and qualities as it pertains to each specific job? So don't write one cover letter and then just basically change out the dear, you know, Dear Zoom or dear Facebook, but like you're changing how their job posting requirements and skills that they're looking for match up to your skills that you have. And I think that's really important um, to making sure you're tailoring your resume and your cover letter to each job. And so if if you haven't done that already, make it a point to to update those things. I'm looking at resumes. I know our career and alumni team with Kaufman Scholars are, your career centers at your colleges. If you've already graduated as an alum, you can always reach back out to your college uh, campus career center, and they are happy to look at resumes and cover letters right now. Uh, and then just making sure, you know, you are taking that job posting and looking at the keywords, because like we know now too, a lot of the systems are automated, so they're pulling in keywords from your resume and cover letter from the job description. And that's how you automatically get pulled in for the recruiters to actually like a human being to look at it. Uh, so you wanna make sure you're doing your best to match up job qualifications and your skills uh, in your resume and your cover letter. And so I love cover letters. I think they're underutilized. Um, a lot of jobs do require them, but there are some that don't. Uh, but I think it's a narrative of your career story and your experience versus just like job bullet point, job bullet point, internship bullet points. The cover letter is more of that story and that narrative. And that's what I appreciate about them. So um, definitely make sure you take the time to write one because you never know. Um, and because I think it, they take, they pull a lot of the important information and things we might not gain from your resume and you pull it into your cover letter. So just think about those things as you're, as you're working on your application document.
So upskilling yourself, you know, identify key skills, find free resources to learn. There are tons of free professional development and personal development things out there right now that people are offering. Um, sometimes in the past they used to charge for them, but now they're free. And after the webinar today, I will send out those resources. Um, so future job interviews will likely ask about your level of experience working remotely, uh, especially, you know, with COVID-19. So for current employers, this is your chance to execute and document specific assignments that you've been able to accomplish from the comfort of your couch <laughs> or your kitchen table, wherever you might be working nowadays. So definitely take the time to use free resources online uh, to learn a new skill. Uh, there are a lot of certificate programs out there that are either free or at a nominal cost. And we are actually, you know, providing that resource through um, SkillPath, which is a professional development organization. So uh, alumni can go in and, and scholars can go in and actually request, oh, yeah, I'd love to be able to have access to a library of resources to learn different skills. Uh, and so we'll We'll definitely, um, if you haven't already been um, contacted with that information, we'll make sure that you have a link to the opportunities form to, to sign up if you're interested in any type of resources to help you learn and gain uh, additional professional and personal skills. Definitely time right now to create a digital presence. So cleaning up your social media, um, have a full LinkedIn profile, create your e-portfolio, which is essentially like your LinkedIn, or if you have a, another website that you want to link people to, to see some of your work, this is the time to do it. So college students are likely no strangers to social media and, you know, this younger generation, uh, but it would be a good use of your time to focus on the types of posts and engagement that could help your career. So, uh, you know, we've discussed how social media can affect your job search um, in like previous conversations with scholars and alumni. And so you wanna make sure that you create content on topics of interest for you, especially on LinkedIn. Like I said before, don't just take articles from LinkedIn and just read through your feed, but contribute content as well. So if you find a really great article or resource, post it on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, more than likely people will like it, comment on it. I've been actually doing that quite a bit now, um, sharing sources on job searching or tips on, you know, 27 things you should be doing to help with your, your mental capacity during COVID-19 and staying working from home. And people have been liking it, commenting on it. So it's been a really great way for me to expand my network and keep my network alive. So, you know, don't forget to also clean up your digital presence by deleting any, uh, anything you wouldn't want a, a potential employer to see on your social media, using security settings to hide anything that you wouldn't want them to see on your posts. Um, when someone does a search for you uh, on Google, or social media, you know, you would want it to speak volumes about your greatness and you wouldn't want anything to pop up that would make them turn away from you as a potential candidate. So do a Google search on your on yourself. Um, I think like on, on some social websites like Facebook, you can see what your profile looks like to someone who uh, is not connected to you. So they you can see like, what does my pro, my profile look like publicly to someone who I'm not connected with. Um, so it's really important to do those things, especially on Google. It's really interesting to Google yourself and put in your name and see what pops up first. Click on images, see what images pop up of you, because there's also people that may have the same name as you. So it, it's interesting to see like how does that pop up um, when someone does a search. And so this is a, a perfect time to be doing some of those things. And so you know, now is the time to, you know, delete any of that content and make sure that you think, okay, would I care if a, a potential employer saw this? Are you in the mentality of, well, this is who I am. 
take it or leave it. So, you know, definitely up to you, but update your LinkedIn profile and start following companies that you're interested in to kind of help build that digital presence. And of course, be flexible, guys. Uh, employers are still trying to figure it out just as much as you're trying to figure it out. This has impacted them as well. So not just job seekers, but employers. So, you know, offers may take a little bit longer. You know, be patient, demonstrate interest in the organization. Uh, be open to new opportunities. So if some of you are getting ready to graduate, you may have had a clear vision of what your future was gonna look like and it's likely a bit hazy now due to the current circumstances. So one of the key things to remember is that there are many paths to get to the career you want to eventually end up in. So just remember that. So, you know, for example, perhaps you don't land your dream job immediately, but are offered an opportunity with a company. You take it, you do, you do the job you were hired for, and you continue to explore other professional possibilities within that organization or with another organization. But just think about the skills that you will acquire in this job that you, you know, potentially take in the next few months. Uh, you know, times of great disruption can also reveal opportunities that you didn't think of earlier in your career planning process. So take a position you may not have expected on your career journey and acquire some new skills. You never know. And then and another thing they talk about is, you know, supplement your income. You know, if necessary, you might consider looking for part-time, remote, or, you know, kind of the gig economy type of work until you get like a full-time offer. Um, doing so can keep your skills sharp, provide you with you know, income, either income period or extra income. Um, so I know a lot of people are kind of taking part-time gigs here and there, so that can also be an option as well. And just thinking about managing the uncertainty, uh, you know, take a break. Remember, you can only control what you can control and making sure you ask for help. That is what we are here for. That is why we are doing this webinar today and providing other resources for our scholars and alumni during this time. We, we wanna make sure that we're able um, to help you. And that's what we're here for. A lot of times people are like, Oh my God, thank you so much. And I'm like, well, that's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, this is a meme we've been using in our webinars when we transition scholars to alumni, but it basically says, you know, how to approach job interviews during or after the pandemic. And the, you know, the job interviewer is saying, you know, do you have any questions for us? And the uh, the person looking for the job is, well, how did your company respond to the coronavirus and what measures were taken to ensure the health, safety, and security of your employees? So again, it goes back to that culture question. You say you care about your employees. You, on your website, you say that you take care of them. But during a time like this, it really reflects how a company does say the things or do the things that they say is on their website. Because the website is supposed to be this outward facing, oh, look how awesome our company is. Look at all the great things um, that we do. And these are the things that we believe in. These are our values. But truly, I think this pandemic will really show who is really walking the walk and uh, actually owning up to those things that they value and their mission and their goals and what they believe in and um, this is a fair question to ask when you are interviewing for jobs and if you guys don't know this is from the movie legally blonde <laughs> i feel like it's a little old for many many of you it is an older movie but it is a classic <laughs> and last but not least you guys stay positive um 
you know, talking with people has been very helpful for me. I know I'm not uh, typically a person that shares a lot about how I'm feeling, but I think during this time, the more I share, the more I have found others to be in the same situation. And even though I'm not job searching, um, I'm connected to people like you guys who are potentially job searching. And so I feel that pressure that many of you are under. And I, I feel that pressure to get the resources to you and the information to help you through this process. And so I, I try to stay positive, try to help you pivot your mindset and think about ways to uh, help you through this time. And so I found, you know, developing a routine, getting out when the weather's nice and just getting some fresh air, uh, connecting with others can help. Um, stay positive. And like I said, the more people you talk with, the more people you tell that you are trying to, you know, figure out your process and your job searching and it's, your plans have all been blown up if you're a planning person and you had everything laid out and ready to go and COVID-19 has ruined all of that for you. You know, how can, how can we help and change that mindset and help you find a different path to get to where you want to be? So, that's it for today. I'm going to stop my share. I will also turn my camera back on. Hello, hi. Um, and if you have any questions, we will answer those right now. We are still recording, we'll, we'll record. So we, um, if anybody has questions or comments. Again, we will send out um, some additional information about resources to help you during this time. Um, there are clickable links in the Word documents that I send out. Uh, so you can go to websites. There are other like free webinars about job searching during COVID-19. A lot of them say the same thing, just kind of in a different way, but um, could be helpful for you. Yay! You're welcome, Jesus. Take care. I've also been following the rule of trying to end meetings. Like if it's a one hour meeting, I try to end <laughs> like at 10, 10 minutes early to give folks some breathing room for their next meeting. I do have like another webinar at one o'clock that I'm just sitting in on, but try to give ourselves some breathing room in between all these meetings. So I did it. Yay, stay positive, Kendra. Awesome. Well, if there are no other questions, and even if there are, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. But thank you guys for watching. If you're watching later, thanks for watching.